All right, hey everyone, and welcome to another sleepless episode of Garden Frugal. I'm Clint, and I got some pretty big news for today. Um, I just got off the phone with Randy from uh, GettingTheirGreen.com, Randy and Amanda, and they've invited me over to, uh, I don't know if you call it syndication or uh, what you'd want to call it, but my videos are going to be uh, featured on their website now. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool because I'm just starting out and uh, they got a lot of people that uh, view and subscribe and go to their website and uh, hopefully that gets my name out there a lot and it helps them out. So very cool. If you guys are watching me there, great. If you're watching me on YouTube, get on over to gettingtheirgreen.com and uh, check me and all the other people out. There's a lot of people on there with uh, some really great information. So, and uh, hopefully I'll get uh, gardenfrugal.com up here and running soon. So, you should be able to check me out there as well. But, uh, you know, I want to start off by uh, talking to you guys about uh, some personal information. Um, I have worms. Yep. I know. Sounds serious, but it's not. If you're a gardener, you want worms. The worms I'm talking about are these red wigglers right here. These guys are the hardest working guys you can have in your garden. Um, they make the best fertilizer. Um, and if, like I say, if you have worms, these are the ones that you want. So, red wigglers. And you guys already probably know about it. This is uh, at your request. This was your second requested um, video that you wanted me to post was on how to do a worm bin on the cheap. So that's what we're going to do today. I got this three tier worm bin and I'm into it for about $18. You can do, even do it for cheaper. You can do it for $6 if you wanted to. Um, and I'll tell you how. So I'm just using Rubbermaid um, Roughneck bins. The bottom one is an 18 gallon bin and these two top ones are 14 gallons. Um, if I had to do it all over again, I would probably use the 14 gallon for the bigger one and then I think the next size down or something that fit in there might have been like a 9 gallon size or something like that. It just makes it easier when they get full um, to kind of maneuver around or to carry but you're not really moving it that much and I refuse to pay three more bucks for a smaller bin when uh, the bigger ones were on sale for six dollars so that's just me being cheap but this system it works great for me. I initially started out with a, a purchased three tier you know, square worm bin, and um, I basically just outgrew it. I would, was putting too much scraps in it, and I was getting a ton of worms, and it just, by, you know, I was, I was putting more in, um, and it wasn't getting processed fast enough to be able to take it out, so I ran out of room. So um, I had to come up with something a little bit different that gave me some more room. So this is it. So with the 14-gallon tub inside the 18, it gives me some space down here, um, and that's where I collect all the moisture that runs off. There shouldn't be too much, but there always is just a little. And uh, I collect the moisture and then I use it in my compost tea. So hopefully you guys uh, saw the video on compost tea brewing that I did. If you didn't, go back, check it out. It's great stuff. All I, all I use is the compost tea and the worm castings or the worm poop on my garden. And my tomatoes are seven feet tall. So stuff works wonders. It's amazing. And these guys are making it all day long without sleeping for free for me. So, um, the 14 gallon, like I said, in the 18 gives me room to keep the moisture. And then the second 14 gives me room to expand. So, um, I start out with just one and you add all your chicken, or your uh, food scraps and kitchen scraps and everything else. I add my coffee grounds, you can add the filters, um, paper, um, just no shiny paper, no meat, no dairy, um, but everything else you can throw in there and these guys will process it up. The only other thing I avoid, um, and I don't know for sure, is banana peels. Um, I don't buy organic banana peels, I probably should, but we go through them in my house like crazy. And uh, they're non-organic and I don't put them in the worm bin because I've heard um, that they spray the banana trees with so much pesticides um, because there's a big nasty poisonous spider that lives in banana trees makes it harmful for the guys harvesting the bananas um, so they spray them with pesticides and I heard that there's um, so much on them that they could affect the worms or kill the worms off in the worm bins. Now if you got organic bananas throw them in there. But I throw, I just got a little bin, I sit next to the, the sink 
and then we put all of our um, scraps in, you know, when I'm making dinner or cutting up vegetables and everything else, it, you know, we end up putting a lot of stuff into this thing. Dump my coffee grounds out in it, the filters, your junk mail, all that type of stuff. You can shred it up, throw it in there. Like I said, just no shiny paper. The best paper, actually, and when you go to get this thing started, is I first fill it up with this really pulpy material. You know, your egg cartons, your drink holders. Um, you know, it's really pulpy. The worms love it. I just shred it up into little, like, one-inch pieces, and, uh, you know, I fill up the bottom, and that's how I start off the worm bin. And then all you're going to need to do is get some red wigglers. So many people are doing these these days, you don't need to go online to some big store or somewhere across the country or something like that and pay a bunch in shipping and everything to get your worm sent to you. Best thing I found was this Craigslist. Like I say, everyone's doing this these days. You can get on Craigslist and you're going to find someone local that's selling worms, selling worm bins, selling the castings. If you guys need some castings or some stuff to kind of get your garden started and you don't have uh, a worm bin up and running yet, you can buy castings. I was buying castings for, I think, five bucks for a five-gallon bucket of uh, really good, high-quality worm castings. So get on Craigslist. You can find them and, uh, you know, you can get them local. So, but as you fill it up with food, the worms will eat it and process it basically down to where it's nothing left but castings, and they'll keep moving towards the food. So once this bin gets full, I put the second bin in, and I'll show you how they move through it in a second here, but then I start filling this one up with food. By the time the bottom bin gets completely processed by the worms, it makes it really easy to harvest because the worms will work their way up to where the food is at. And uh, once they work their way up into this bin, I can then take that second bin out. Um, and if it's fully processed, there's not going to be very many worms in there whatsoever. So this makes it really easy to harvest. I don't have to go through and pick all the worms out and stuff like that. But if you do want to, there's a couple different ways to do it. Once you get a whole bunch of worms, if you want to give some worms to some friends, you can just dump a bunch of it out on the ground, they don't like the sunlight, just mound it up into like a volcano and pick off the top and then let it sit for a couple minutes and what the worms will do is they'll move away from the sun and go in towards the center and then you can kind of scrape off the outside again and keep the castings and you'll just keep doing that until you get down to where you'll just have a big ball of worms. Um, you can use that to you know, get um, worm free castings or you can do it to uh, collect the worms and give the worms to someone. And another trick I found is they love bread. Um, try not to do too much starch at one time, breads or pastas or stuff, you know, kind of keep that to a minimum, but you can put it in there. But if you want to harvest some worms, you can just get a piece of old stale bread or something like that and just set it on the top. And man, you know, you come out the next day, they'll be all around that thing eating that piece of bread. Um, and you can just scoop your hands up underneath that piece of bread and pick it up and you're going to get more worms in than anything else. So it's another quick, easy way to get some worms. But, so like I said, I do this three-tier system. Once this one gets processed, um, I can pretty much put it on the garden and, and everything else. So here's what we got. It's not rocket science. You guys can adapt or use this. Do it any other way. This is just the way I do it. And I haven't found anyone else on YouTube that does it exactly the same. I did kind of do it a little bit different, but it's my design, and feel free to take any of this and modify it yourself. But I got these bins, and then I don't know if you can see, I just got a, a quarter inch drill bit and drilled the entire bottom out. So both of these bins, this, this one and this one, are completely um, drilled out. And what that allows, in the bottom bin, I always put a, a layer of about four pieces of newspaper, um, kind of thick along the bottom and that just prevents the worms from falling out down into the water and drowning. It just kind of keeps them in the bin. Um, the quarter inch drill bit, drill the whole thing out and then when it sits down on the next one it allows the worms to kind of go up and uh, through. I got one eighth inch holes all the way around the lip here. I didn't want to put a bunch of holes in the top of the lid because like I said I set mine outside and I don't want rain water getting in and just basically flooding this thing and drowning the worms. So I didn't put any holes in the top. I put them underneath this lip, which still allows air to go in, air to come out, um, but it doesn't really allow it, rain water and stuff to go in and flood it out. So I got holes along the top of each of those, and then I have along the bottom another set of 1 8 
inch holes all the way across. And the reason for that is once, and it'll never get this much moisture in it, but if it did, if it filled up with too much moisture, the water and the moisture would come out through the holes and not go into um, the second bin and flood it with uh, water. So it just it would make a, a mess, um, drowned worms, and make your compost really hard to deal with and everything else. So, but the other reason is air. You want to keep air movement going through this thing to stop it from going anaerobic and smelling bad. So you want a lot of air movement. So what I did, I did one eighth inch holes and I did it around the whole entire thing. Um, and the reason why I did one eighth inch um, in my previous bin, the square one that I bought, um, the three tier one, um, there were spots in the top that uh, things could get in and what I found was uh, soldier flies. I had no idea what they were. They looked like almost like a big black wasp to me. I had no idea what they were. I started researching them online and I found out they're soldier flies. And uh, you know, I'm actually going to make a separate bin to try to grow and harvest soldier flies. But you don't want them in with your worms because when they lay their eggs and uh, you know, they start growing, they make these huge grubs. And um, the grubs eat a lot, process a lot, um, but they also metabolize so fast and grow so fast, they get really, really hot. And uh, they can actually end up overtaking your worm bin um, and actually making your worm bin way too hot and killing off all your worms. So you, I do it to keep soldier flies, um, fruit flies, and all those other types of things out of my bin. Um, you could do bigger holes. Um, but like I say, I do these smaller ones. I haven't had problems with fruit flies and stuff like that. And once you get fruit flies, they're a nightmare to get rid of. So I'll give you some other tips on how to prevent you from getting fruit flies as well. But eighth of an inch all the way, eighth of an inch holes all the way around. And um, you know, on this one, if you guys are going to do the exact same system, um, I measured up to six and a half inches. Six and a half inches. It's below the bottom of that 14 gallon bin, and you can go and go around and do it. So a really quick tip, this is back from my construction days, but you can basically just measure six and a half inches with your pen, mark it, and when you have it on its side, hold your pen on the end of your tape measure, and then with it on its side, get your fingers, and when you got your pen right on your six and a half inch mark, hold your finger on the tape measure between your, your finger and your thumb, pinch it, and then that way you can just slide it right along and use your pen and you can just mark six and a half inches it'll give you a nice straight line all the way across and you can just go through and drill your holes. So just a quick tip, like I say it's back from my construction days, that's how we used to cut plywood. So it makes it really, really fast. Um, you get all those holes drilled out and then like I said you just need to start the bin. So I started off with a lot of really good pulpy, um, papery material, newspaper. Um, you don't have to worry about newspaper, color print, or not, or black and white. It's all soy-based um, ink these days, and it's, it's not harmful whatsoever. So, newspaper, shred it up. Um, like I said, I like the egg cartons, the drink holders, they're nice and pulpy. Shred those up. You want to get your bin going. Um, I'd say give yourself like a month. Give yourself a month of keeping food scraps. Um, you know, and getting the bin set up before you go and get your worms or order your worms. Because the worms, they don't have teeth. Um, you know, they're going to be eating decomposed food. So you want to get your food kind of rotted and go in that direction so they can start eating it as soon as you get the worms. So I like to get um, my worm bin up and going um, ahead of time. And then you don't need to add any moisture or water or anything like that. You want your worm bin to be, people say stuff like, like a, wrung out sponge. Well, I don't even know what that means when it comes to dirt. Basically, you don't want it dry and crumbly, and you don't want it sop and wet. Somewhere in between is what you want. So, you'll find, once you start putting food in, you won't need to add any moisture or water. So that's why I like to get it going ahead of time. I don't need to add any water. Once that food and everything starts breaking down, and my coffee grounds and the, or everything's in there, there's enough moisture in there to kind of get things going. And then, you know, a month down the road, you open it up, everything's already going to be nice and moist and stuff in there. You can dump your worms, worms right in. Your food will already be kind of rotted, decomposing. Um, it'll give them, you know, some good material to eat. Um, if you got big chunks of stuff, chop it up. Make it smaller for them. Make it a little bit easier for them. Um, 
And then you will want to put a little bit of garden soil or garden dirt in there. Um, worms are just like chickens. They don't have teeth or anything else. They have a gizzard and they'll need some little gravel or some sand in there to, and that's how they mash things up. So throw a handful of dirt in there, a good layer of paper, and then to keep the fruit flies out, because once you get them, they're a nightmare. Um, to keep the fruit flies out, you want, um, I'd say, a good four to six inch layer on top um, of either shredded paper, which you can use. I don't like because when it gets wet, it gets matted up and it becomes like a thick, solid layer. Um, I actually found leaves um, to be the best. So I collect up the leaves. The worms will eat the leaves and everything too, but if you got that nice thick layer of leaves on the top, they don't get matted up and uh, it also becomes food for them. But if you keep that thick layer um, of leaves on the top, it's going to prevent fruit flies and all that type of stuff from, from getting into your bin and taking it over basically. So, and then something like this is I, you just rotate where you feed. So I use, I use a six area system in this bin, basically an area here, area here, area here, and then in the back as well. So when I feed them, I just start and I usually just start in one corner. And once a week I feed them, so I collect everything for a week, and then once a week I come out, and uh, you know you can use your little tools, your little shovels to clear away the leaves or the paper to get down to where the worms are at, and uh, dump your food in, and then you can just leave the shovel stuck in there, and then that way you know where you fed last, and you can just keep the rotation going, and uh, you can just feed the worms. So, you know, it's a great system. It's, it starts going for free. I've been having this thing going for almost a year now. i got a ton of worms in there. I mean, even to the point where I can start pulling some out and sharing them with friends and uh, everything else. And they just make a lot of really great compost. So, like I told you, you can harvest it a couple different ways. And then you can just get some hardware cloth and some 2x4s and make a sieve and uh, shake it out, basically. And uh, get yourself some nice, rich compost. But uh, they do all the dirty work, all the hard work for you. And... Uh, it's not much you have to do to keep them happy. So, um, and that's basically it, guys. I mean, I think I think that's a lot of information. I'm sure I forgot some stuff. I can post, uh, you know, some more comments and stuff below. If you guys have questions, please fire them off. Put them in the comments below. If you know a better way of doing this or uh, anything else, I'd love to hear it. You know, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just a guy that uh, is doing this on my own. But I, like I say, I try to do a lot of research on the topics and uh, share as much of the information I can with you guys. So um, go ahead, make sure you go on over, getintheregreen.com, check me out, check me out on uh, YouTube. I'm also on Facebook, Garden Frugal, Twitter, Garden Frugal, and like I said, gardenfrugal.com is in the process of uh, getting up and running. So until next time, know your limit and grow within it. All right, see you guys. Take care.